Well, we're about to finish our, our handout that we had for our children several months ago. And um, talking about some of the great and important truths of Scripture. And the greatest is this, children. It's to realize, why are you here? Why were you made? The Scriptures tell us, and it's affirmed in many of the, the great writings all throughout history, that you and I were made for Him, to enjoy Him, to know Him, to serve Him, to bless Him. Now, this is a fundamental thing that you must understand, children and adult alike. You must understand this. If you don't get this right, you can even be religious and miss everything. That knowing God is not primarily about having every one of your needs met or things to go your way. But it's to come to understand the greatness of who God truly is and then live your life according to that greatness. Now, I want to read a few things that I've written here and then I'll explain them. And they're based upon a text out of Psalms 34, 8 that says this, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. There are many adults here right now, children, who could raise their hand and tell you that they have tasted many, many things. And most of those things, even though they tasted delicious, even to the lips, that when they made their way down to the stomach, it became like gravel in their gut. There are many things in this world that you can taste and delight in, but they can lead to death. But to taste and delight in God, to know Him, to seek Him, that is something that will benefit and bless your life. Now, in the Westminster Confession and in the 1689 London Confession, we have this statement that we are to enjoy God forever. That's one of the purposes why we are here, to enjoy God forever. Now, I want to read something to you. How do you enjoy God? How do you learn to delight in God? I mean, what are you supposed to do to make yourself delight in God more? That's a really good question. Well, I just want you to consider a few things that I've written here. First of all, delighting in God is not something you do or even something you plan. It's more like something that happens to you. And you say, well, well, what do you mean? Well, let me give you an illustration. Have you ever seen a beautiful sunset? Okay. What happened? Did you enjoy it and delight in it? Did you point to it and tell everyone else around you how beautiful it was? Yes, that's what you did. Now, you didn't plan that. It's not something that you contrived. It's something that happened to you. When you saw it, did you have to force yourself to be delighted, joyful, or happy? No. All you had to do was look at it, and the beauty of that thing conquered your heart. You see, in Christianity today, it's always about, well, what do I got to do? What do I got to do? When they say to someone how to fix their life, you need to do this, 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 and this. Or to fix the church, you need to do this, 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 and this. Or to fix the family, you need to follow these principles. Well, here's what you need. You need a bigger view of how wonderful, beautiful, powerful, glorious that God is. That's what you need. And then it kind of has a way of fixing everything. You see, we're not a legalistic people, even though we may have several rules. We're not all about rules. We're not about doing something that we hate to do. We're talking about an encounter with God that so changes our heart that we delight in Him and delight in what He delights in. We like what He likes. Do you see that? Now, parents, here's something that is extremely important and it affects every aspect of life because in these little talks, I want to hit both the children and the parents. Um, you can allow your child's mind to be bombarded with so many things that are fake that when it comes to that which is real, it bores them. 
And let me give you an example. Uh, John Green is our media guy, and one day, well, it was a few years ago, I think, when Spider-Man 1, 2, 3, or 4 or something came out, whatever it was, it, it had a guy in it like a spider. That's what I remember. <laughs> and he showed it to me on, on, on his computer screen. He said, look at this trailer. And it lasted for somewhere around 45 seconds. And literally, it was amazing. I guess that's why they call him the Amazing Spider-Man, because it was amazing. The music, the images, the movement, everything else. And when, when it got through, I was just sitting there going, <sighs> I mean, it was, it was fabulous. Problem is, I can't do that. But, but here's the thing is, people start looking at all that stuff that's not real. And they almost, they see so much of it, they think this is the way life is supposed to be. So when they look at anything that really is life, it bores them to tears. You girls who like what I call the, the bonnet movies, you know, where the, the girls are, you know, pride and prejudice and all these different things. Let me share with you something. There's nothing wrong with that, but let me just share with you something that is a danger. If you notice that the movie ends when the guy gets the girl or the girl gets the guy, depending on which way you look at it, that's where it ends. That's not real. If it's going to be real, it has to continue on to rock, paper, scissors, who does the dishes. <laughs> Do you see that? And, and that's our problem. Our children cannot delight in God because we give them so many fake things that capture captures their flesh. I'll give you one last illustration. I uh, allowed my boys to start taking karate and there was a reason. They saw this kind of old karate movie several months ago where the guys are flying through roofs and jumping 30 feet in the air and doing backflips and all these different things and they said, I want to do that. <laughs> and I said, well son, it's, it's a movie. So I take them to karate, and, and after the first day, it's, well, when do we learn to fly? <laughs> or when they finally did get hit one time, they said, whoa, that hurts. <laughs> yeah, it really does. When it's not a movie, it hurts. You see, we have to be very careful. There are certain things that we should not, even good things, that we should not allow the minds of our children to be bombarded with. But here's also another danger. Don't take away something that you're not going to fill it with something better, more wholesome. You're not holy because you starve a child to death. You're holy because you take away that which will damage the child in order to give the child that which will benefit him. Do you see that? Very, very important. All right, well, let's pray. Father, I pray that... Uh, that we would be a real people, that we would learn to delight in real things, but most importantly, Father, help us, have pity on us, in our dull minds and our dull hearts, to have a growing vision of the greatness, the kindness, the love, the spectacular nature of God, that we as parents would delight in God and our children would see our delight. Lord, stop us from being rule-keeping Pharisees with no joy. And, oh God, that we would have joy. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Lord, I pray for our children that they would truly be born again and that they would be able to share with their parents in the joy that is Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Please visit our website at heartcrymissionary.com. There you will find information about the ministry, our purpose, beliefs, and methodologies, and extensive information about the missionaries we are privileged to serve.